You're listening to the Coop Homeschool Podcast. This is your podcast for community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling. I'm Mandy. I'm Jessica. And this is The The Coop. Coop. It's time for another homeschool hack. Bedtime education. Oh, I love it. I know. Sounds kind of crazy. But, um, you know, bedtime's a wonderful time to actually get some homeschooling in. Sneak it in. Yeah, yeah. You kind of sneak it in. It's incognito. And um, and we're going to discuss why bedtime can be, according to research, one of the best times to do nice. it. Nice. Um, ideas for bedtime learning activities and some takeaways. Perfect. But let's do our scoop on the kid. Whew. Okay. So today we went on an impromptu field trip. We were supposed to be hanging out with you. I know, but I... But then yeah. your day just... I started late. Yeah. Yeah. Our days just get away from us sometimes, and so the plan had to be flexible, and um, I was into my California curriculum still, and we were reading about the legend of Queen Califia, and then all of a sudden I remembered, right literally in the park in our backyard, there's a sculpture by a famous sculptor about Queen Califia, Mm -hmm. and so I was like, we're going, we're going to go, and we can still meet you according to your new time schedule, and go and get this done, and so we did. Um... What would you think? I, I, it was beautiful. I've seen it before. I have never seen it, right. but I saw your stories on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Or our stories on right, Instagram. Right, right, right. I posted on the Coop Homeschool. On Instagram. And it, it's so incredibly beautiful. I feel like they could charge a $8 ticket per person yeah. to go. Absolutely. And um, it took four years to build. Okay. The sculpture took it's four years. It's full immersive mm-hmm. art, it looks like. And then many of the actual tall standing sculptures she did off-site. So oh, she yeah. sculpted them. I think she was living in La Jolla. So she did it in her own um, art area, warehouse probably. Uh-huh. And then they would bring them up to the park when she did the actual installation. And she actually died right before the installation <gasps> opened. Was she? What did she die of? I don't remember. Oh. That wasn't what we were studying. Well, we weren't studying <laughs> her, the artist. Yeah, but I think it might <clears throat> say it somewhere in okay. something I posted. Well, I remember years ago when I first moved here. Or not maybe, when, but at least... Five or six years yeah, ago. Yeah, it opened in 2003. Okay. So it opened right after I left. Okay. So I had heard about it, and mm-hmm. every time I tried to go, it was closed. And I was right. And then finally I thought to look it up, and it's like, it's open when I can never go. It was right. like during nap time. Tuesdays or... and Thursdays from 9 to 12, and yeah. the second oh, that was and probably... fourth Saturdays of every oh, yeah. month. <laughs> and that was probably, the Tuesdays and Thursdays were probably right. during the early nap, the first nap of exactly. like a two-napping child. So totally. it was like, oh no, can't can't do that. Can't risk right. losing my me time no. during a nap. But I'm so glad you got to go. Yeah, it was super I can't pretty. wait to go see it and have my kids go my see it. My dad loves things like that. So he was the one who took me the first time. Otherwise, oh. I probably wouldn't even have known about it, quite honestly. Oh, but my I dad's cool that. like that. Oh, he's so, so cool. So it just, dad. we had a picture book that went with it. It was an so, amazing picture yeah. book. And it's, it was all somewhat impromptu. So, yeah, I'll make sure we post the picture book. But if yeah. you check out our Instagram stories, I'll have it saved. Because I was thinking we need a we need a little saved story highlight oh, yeah, about for, these things. Yeah, for our like California studies. history. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your human oh, you body do... one, you've had a ton too. So. We'll We're going to do that. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So, um, yeah, well, I love that. And, I, and I'm and i so glad you at least thought to uh, invite me. Yes, I did. I said, well, maybe we can... Make it work. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, okay, so yes. my scoop on the coop yes. is uh, we are do- in our human body unit still. We yes. started it in like late August, and now Here we're still we in it. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. And, um, and we dissected cow eyeballs yesterday? I think it was yesterday. And uh, the ins and out of that, like I, I could do a whole article on a non-scientist, non-dissecting person right. leading her children through leading the blind, the blind leading the blind. Right. We're going to be talking about um, eyeballs here. Right. So I watched a few YouTubes, and I had the kids watch a few YouTube or a couple YouTubes on dissecting cow eyeballs. But see, I'd already thrown away my scalpel right. because it had almost cut off my thumb when I was cleaning it last time. So I was like, okay, no scalpel. Well, I literally no, no, had nothing to cut the eyeball with. Your chef's knife. I yeah, I used our normal meat knife that cuts meat. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Those muscles around the eye is so strong, it would not cut through it. We're using 
Right. Kitchen scissors, like forget the dissection tools. Those like we ended up like having to put to the side. Right. Then then eventually they're taking the scissors and some of the pokey dissection tools and they're oh, going no. in through the front. You're supposed to go in through the back so you right. can see the layers and the gelatinous. And we're squeezing out the lenses. We're squeezing out the iris and the gelatinous inside. And so gross. But they had fun and it was right. intriguing and it was a neat, neat time together. Tell so um, I, I love getting out of my comfort zone. I hate getting out of my comfort zone, but then I love that I did it right. when I do it, you know, yeah, and when I'm absolutely. done doing it. When so, you're all done with it. Yeah, when I'm all done with it, I was like, so oh, phew, I've been stressing about that for weeks. <laughs> okay, so should we get started on yes, our homeschool hack? What bedtime you education. So first we're going to talk about why bedtime. Second, we're going to talk about the activities. And then, like mm-hmm. I said, third, the takeaways. So first, okay. why bedtime? And I have uh, three reasons why bedtime might be a good time to capitalize on their receptiveness. Okay. So first I'm going to say research says time of day matters. Mm. So there's this article by the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development called Giving Students the Right Time of Day. Okay. And this is from decades ago. But um, they were talking about the heliotrope flower. And they said in the 18th century, there was a debate about this flower. They said, the sun is what makes it open every day. And then when the sun goes away, it closes every day. The sun is what does it. It's the sun. Right. And then they said, no, it's the natural cycle of the flower. So this, so then they decided to box the flower in total darkness and then they would peak and it had indeed opened. Right. Even without the sun. So they figured out, wow, okay, this flower at least, has its own, what we would call now a circadian sure. rhythm. Right. So it had its own inter- internal clock. And so mm-hmm. people do too. Everybody has their their circadian rhythm. And NIH, um, Na- National Institutes of Health, defines circadian rhythms as physical, mental, and behavioral changes that follow a 24-hour cycle. These natural processes respond primarily to light and dark and affect most living things, mm-hmm. including animals, plants, and microbes. Right. It's just like when people go on a graveyard shift. Mm-hmm. You know, while they can do it, their body it, doesn't like it. It has negative long-term health effects. You mm-hmm. know, you might be able to do it for short amounts of time, like if it's just a shift that you're on for a season. But um, yeah, it's it's rough because it's true. You're you have this natural rhythm regardless of what the sun and moon are doing. Yeah. You know, and so then if you try to flip it, it's got some. Yeah, crazy and you think of nurses who are oh, yeah. around the clock nurses, and then they come home and try and have a normal life for two or three days, and then go back to that. Yeah. Um, so so what they're finding is there's a peak time of day for okay. everyone, and it's I think it's when they're like they call it their temperature peak. So. Oh. Yeah. So everyone has their own natural rhythm within a range. And there's this really great article from Bookshark. And I will link that on the podcast. Okay. Um, Bookshark is a homeschool curriculum publishing company. And it says, quote, subsequent research has confirmed that some people reach their temperature peak before noon, hmm. some in the afternoon, and some in the evening. Nice. Hence, a picture emerges of the morning person, the afternoon person, and the evening person. And we That's hear that cool. all the time. Like, yeah. oh, I'm a morning person. I'm a... I'm a night person or whatever, yeah. but it's true. Yeah. It really is. I think I've become an afternoon person. Oh yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm not good at morning do or I, night Do now. you even see me in the morning? <laughs> I think I sleep that away <laughs> or I, I uh, make my tea away and it's right. done with. So morning versus afternoon. Yes. Um, in a 2011 article from Columbia University, uh, we learned that quote, learning styles research <clears throat> reveals increased learning occurs when a student is taught and assessed at their preferred time of day. Nice. And that morning learning is associated with superior immediate recall when compared to learning in the afternoon or evening. Hmm. However, material initially learned in the afternoon is more beneficial to long-term memory call. And that right-handed students tend to perform better in the morning, whereas left-handed students tend to perform better in the afternoon. What on earth? Yeah, so I'm linking the article here. Right. For more about sleep, check out the Sleep Foundation. Okay. Um, but um, So there's so much research into determining time of day, and it seems like too many variables. Oh, so I'm left-handed, right. but I'm, you know, this and I'm not. Right. But, I'm left-handed, so that yeah, makes sense for us. I know. Um, and, you know, I have to say, when I was... Um, in high school, I was uh, in these APIB classes, and then I was swimming. I, I remember like 36 to 40 hours a week, including driving. 
Like there was no time to study and stuff. No. So in history, I was getting a D. And that's my junior year, when it really matters on your transcript. Right. And my parents then said, okay, they bought me an audio recorder. They had me take it, and I got permission, of course. And I had to tape every single class. And every night, then I had to turn it on as I was falling asleep. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Who knows if I even heard it? I don't know. Right. But my grade went up to a B. Well, there you go. I mean, yeah, you just, who right. knows, you know? But um, but anyway, so maybe, maybe even back then I was an evening person. Totally. So um, so all this, re oh, and they're also researching right now that, that effect. Um, mm -hmm. There's like a study that was proposed in October of 2021 yeah. about this, um, I forgot which university, but that's, that's what they're studying is the memory recall in the morning, it, depending on what time the information right. they had. Right. Yeah. So, so there's so much research. So that should just really just help trigger us to pay attention right. to our kids. When are, when are they at their best? When do they seem their most receptive? And um, for some, it's in the evening at bedtime. Totally. Like they, they love to stay up longer. And you right. kind of see that a lot in teenagers. So sure. I'm sure there's research that says too in their development. Like um, I did look at some sleep things about like teenagers need to sleep longer in the morning because they stay up later right. at night. I don't know. Why couldn't they just go to bed earlier? And then, right. But, but for some reason they stay right. up late and they sleep in. Right. Well, it's like as the older you get, typically the earlier you start to wake or the less hours of sleep you need, not for teenagers, yeah, but yeah. older, you know, which is why by the time we're in our sixties and seventies, maybe yeah. we'll be like 6am rights or wow. Wow. We'll Can so you even efficient. imagine? Yeah, but then we'll be falling asleep in the right. recliner <laughs> at like 2.30. Sounds lovely. <laughs> so, um, okay. So now we know mm -hmm. research says there's something to care about yes. in our children's rhythms, that they have a peak time of day. Oh, and another article that's not going to be linked here was saying how they recommend schools have a morning program an, an afternoon oh, program like and then kinder. Yeah. yeah. And then an evening program. They sure. said there should be three options for kids to be able to go to school so oh, they could be, be cool? educated at their peak times. Yeah. And even teachers could be performing at their peak time. Yeah. So it's the same for teachers. So it's the same for us as moms. We have a peak time. And so when you think about it, I have a peak time. Each one of my three kids has a peak time. There's going to have to be compromise. Of course. But, but just keeping that in mind that when right. there's like material that really matters to you to teach your six-year-old. If you know her peak time of day, then right. maybe pick that peak time right. of day. Right, and it doesn't mean don't do anything in the right. other hours. It right. just means that there's something that you're really working towards or on and mm -hmm. you want it to be retained, choose her optimal learning period. Yeah, yeah and like so it. for my kids, the reason this came up for me is I saw over the past few years, like, wow, evenings are super receptive. They're super willing to share. Right things that happened and, and what they liked and didn't like. And they're also even ready to like pull out a math book. They'd rather do it then than in the morning. Fascinating, yeah. They just want their free time in the morning. Yeah, but at night, they're ready to sit down and just do it in their bed. Right. Although the research also says you shouldn't be doing any work in your bed. Your bed right. should be a place of yeah. peace. But but I just think that's so interesting. Okay. Yes. So that's the research part. Number two, why bedtime? It's a peaceful and meaningful time to connect yeah. for many. Yeah, now, some kids get in bed and they go to sleep right away. No. But yeah. <laughs> for most of the moms I know, they're, the kids are now, they want to do their, you know, rainbows and puddles mm -hmm. or whatever you want. Rainbows would be good things and puddles would right, be bad right, things. Right. They want to do that kind of stuff. And um, they want to tell you about something they learned or something someone said. Even from days ago, they yeah. want to tell you the jokes and they, right. it's just amazing. So, um, that's such a great time when our words of wisdom can seemingly make a bigger impact. Right. Yeah. And then it's like mulling around in their mind, possibly as they go to sleep, maybe during yeah. the night and just the other, just, was it last night? Just last night, my yeah. daughter was upset about something. And so I talked with her for like 20 or 30 minutes. And then each one of the kids wanted me again, even though they were already put to bed. My husband had done all that. Now they wanted me. And so then I did another 20 minutes with one kid, right. another 20 minutes with another. And it was so wonderful. I felt like, mm -hmm. wow, I connected more with them in those 20 minutes than I did all day. Right. Even though we're in the same room, we're together, we're teaching stuff. This was really heartfelt connection. Sure. Yeah. And it was peaceful, you right. know, and helping them work through things. Yeah, I love that. Do you find that um, your daughter is that way too? Like she's more willing to open up at night? I don't 
no, no, she doesn't really open up ever. But um, yeah, no, at night, a lot of her anxieties will come out. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, it prompts us to ask and she'll share some of it sometimes. I never know if I'm getting yeah. like a whole picture all the time or not. And, you know, I don't want to keep asking questions if she's going to bed, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean like yeah, you don't want to do anything that gets them worked up too. But, you yeah, know, she yeah. definitely likes to be um, busy in the evenings for mm -hmm. sure. And so, you know, whether she's writing a book or mm -hmm. reading a book or, you know, wanting to do something active before she gets in bed, that's very common for her. But it was funny because I was actually asking you as we were prepping before this episode, I was like, did you find any research on whether they are better learners if they feel really bonded? Yeah. You know, and so there wasn't anything directly to that. But I just feel like with you saying that, that, you know, research is indicating that bedtime is such a good time for emotional development yeah. and bonding yeah. and connection. I just wonder if that makes it a good opportunity for learning too. They feel really safe. They're at yeah. home. You know, they already got the day past instead of waking up and not knowing what the day is going to yeah, hold. Like yeah. I imagine for certain kids in particular, it can be a little bit like anxiety ridden to kind of mm -hmm. wonder, is, is my day going to go like this? What if we don't make it to this thing know, on time? Yeah. And, you know, there's those kids who just naturally mm -hmm. think like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know my, um, my child development specialist aunt who has been mm -hmm. part of many studies for ages mm -hmm. zero to five has said... You challenge your kids during the day, and then at night you coddle them because that's when they're the most vulnerable right. is at night. And sense. so that would make sense with the connecting. That would make sense with the, you know, so sometimes we rush. I just think about it, Sometimes we rush bedtime because I want my me time. I want my time with my friend, or I want my time with my husband, or I want to watch my show. Right. And we might be rushing, like, the best time of the day that we could have with our kids. Right. And so maybe figuring out a different part of the day where I can say, okay, from 2 to 3, I'm watching my show. So I can I'm be emotionally my, and available. Then, and then now yeah. I'll be more available because I, I got a little bit of entertainment for myself right. at some point in my day. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, and then third, um, certain things will help your children fall asleep. So mm -hmm. research shows that reading and soft music will help you fall asleep. Now, you're not supposed to be looking at devices, but I did see an article that said um, a very calm show is, is nice. And I was like... I don't know. Everything else says no, no light. Screen, yeah. Right. Um, no screens for like two hours before bedtime. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think that's, um, but anyways, uh, but for the most part, reading and soft music yes. and uh, was agreed upon. So that will play into the, some of the activities that, um, I recommend. And, um, but have you ever laid in bed for like hours oh, yeah. wishing you could go to sleep? But yes. then as soon as you put in your book, you fall asleep. Yeah. I or a So my daughter and I are not good at podcasts and books. Okay. It doesn't make us sleepy. Um, we like our story, and so we keep listening. Yeah, I yeah. rarely have fallen asleep to a book. I do get to a point where I'm too sleepy to keep listening, yeah. but it could be an hour or more. Oh, wow. Yeah. So usually I have to intentionally turn on the white noise I like listening to, which mm -hmm. has a melody. Oh, that's because cool. Because I prefer the music to just the pure white totally. noise. And then my husband and son love the crickets and wolves howling oh, and I'm no, like no, no I can't do it I mean if my like son had like his they're way camping. if my son had his way there would also be the train and the, the fog horn oh, no. I'm like no <laughs> I'm like I can't do it I can't do it <laughs> and, then, um, and then there might you know occasionally be some other noises in the bedroom that I don't want to listen to yeah. and it, that drive me crazy I'm a like super what? Light like what kind of noises snoring. oh okay <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> It's trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> Snoring. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, so, yeah. So, I have my earbuds that I use. Oh, totally. And well, I you just did that at one. our hotel yeah, I did. Together. Yeah. I just keep in one. And every time I flip over, I switch the earbud. Yeah, yeah. And I go right back well, to sleep. Well, because it hurts when you lay on the earbud. It does. Oh, yeah. it's painful. Yeah, but I go right back to sleep. So, I know for me, that's a, a great trick. Yeah. So... I think that's just kind of clues us into the idea to look to see what works for your child. Like yes. maybe trial and error is a good mm -hmm. option. Like, okay, do they, after a week of doing this, are they falling asleep more easily or are they staying up longer? Well, then that might not be a good activity right. for them. Um, okay, so here's the section on learning activities at bedtime. Yes. They can even be part of their routine. Of like if you always do something in order, like they take a bath and then they brush their teeth and right. they get their jammies on or whatever. And then they have a half an hour to do this or they or until they fall asleep. The important thing is to keep it like peaceful and relaxing. 
So, so we're kind of combining things about right now about homeschooling at night, but also keeping in mind that they need to go to sleep. Right. We call it quiet hour in our house. So if your bedtime is eight, starting at seven, it's quiet hour. So Mm. that's, I mean, occasionally we will allow a calm show, but usually it's not a show. It's time for getting in our jammies and calming down Mm -hmm. and yeah. I love it. So, um... So, like, for us, a sample schedule would be at 7, you get in your jammies. Mm-hmm. 7.30, we we would do, like, when we're good about doing <clears throat> family devotions about God, when we're good about that, we would do that at 7.30 and yeah. pray, and then it's to bed, and then Marcus, usually Marcus, maybe me, will go and do the, the whole bedtime thing, and then they are free to do what they want until it seems like if we hear too many giggles and, and too much up and down because they're running from room to room, we're like, okay. Right. You guys are all done now. Right. Time to go to sleep. Now it's really bedtime. Yeah. But um, so here I have six different types of activities, and yeah. then you might have more to add to it, or it might just fit in these categories. So audio edu- mm. education. Yes. CD player in the room. They can listen to history, tales from around the world, foreign language practice, classical music, audio books. Did you know Magic Tree House? It has like audio CDs. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know these little, little these kid yeah. books that are like little, even I've always audio. hated reading out loud. So you've been doing this for so a while. So I've been doing audio books yeah. for a while with Sophia. Yeah. yeah. So if you do audio books, I would say set a timer because if you know, okay, we'll set it for 15 minutes. If they right. fall asleep before that, at least you know just to go back 15 minutes. But yeah. if it, it's an hour later, you're like, oh, where were you or in the book? unknown amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number two, books. So... You want to make reference books available. Mm-hmm. That's a very calm thing to look at. It doesn't. Yeah. Um, there's no suspense or scariness. Right. And um, National Geographic for kids and Us Born and um, my son's right now looking at Britannica's the first big book of why from that's Costco. Cool. Yeah, and he calls me in to like. Let me Did you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's really the best cool. when they want to teach you. Right. Fiction and nonfiction books. And here's an idea with those: you can start reading aloud to them with the fiction or nonfiction book. And then you can say, okay, and then whatever else you read, tell me about it in the morning. Right. And then they're practicing summary. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, um, and then you can ask them questions about yeah. it because you have you have a teeth in the game a little bit in that you you actually got to read some of it. So totally. um, joke books, they're lighthearted. Um, it just keeps their mind occupied until they're actually ready to sleep. Okay, number three, workbooks and activity books. Mm-hmm. You know, you came from anywhere. Um, how to draw books, you know, math practice books. Right. Okay. Category four journals. So my son had me print out or use a bunch of printer paper and comb bound bound it. I've talked about that and he was keeping a journal for months, every single day writing. And then he has like three or four volumes. So So he doesn't do it now, but he would just work on it. And I think that did help tire him out because he's processing his day. He's getting through his whole day and his thoughts about things. Sometimes he would read it to us. And then he'd go to sleep. It was cool. It's a wonderful decompression moment. But there's do-it-yourself ones, gratitude journals, all that. And they say gratitude at the end of the day as well. That's great. It's a helpful way to, to bring peace to your heart and mind. Like, right. Kind of like distract you from any anxiety you might yeah. have because you're focusing it on being grateful. Right. And I think, you know, by praying with your kids and talking about, you know, the question in my household is always, how did the Lord bless you today? Oh, I love that. My husband, that's all him. Yeah. Um, and now I do that with them when yeah. I'm in there. I but, love it. Um, that's yeah, such how did a great the Lord way. Bless Instead you of a today? rainbow, it's how did the Lord bless you today? What? I love it. I mean, it's but all yeah, the same every family's their own thing. Yeah. But I, I love that reframing right. of that. But yeah. it's the same idea as the gratitude journal. So mm-hmm. if there's things that we're feeling upset about or disappointed by, when you kind of recap your day and frame it in this way, like, no, look, at the end of the day, we believe that the Lord has has blessed you far greater than you feel suffering yeah you know yeah and we need to be thankful and you know continue being prayerful of tomorrow you yeah. know how can we fix these minor things so that we can just live in our blessings yeah that's so cool I love it and then card making <clears throat> so sometimes there might be a birthday coming up or someone they know dog died and yeah. I don't always deliver these letters Truth be told. Truth be told, because I just forget. But uh, now they're old enough to do their own addresses mm-hmm. and stamps. But for years, I was like, <gasps> so a, 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 a friend from our cook group, their grandma died. And I actually oh, just found them the other day. And it was from like three years ago or what? two years ago. I know. So, but anyways, but card making, <clears throat> that's a, you know, coloring is a very um, therapeutic thing. Yeah. And then they're also thinking about somebody. Yeah, I like that one. And then um, conversations. So we've talked mm-hmm. a lot about the conversations you can have. 
and the sharing of how to love and how to be kind and how to handle challenges, yeah. just like you were saying. So yeah. anything else you can think of activities? We do games. Oh. So I know games can seem not so calm, but there are more calm games. Not everything has to be highly competitive and oh, fast-paced. Totally. Yeah, but, totally. You know, a game of checkers here and there, just yeah. like working the brain and kind of focusing. Mm-hmm. August. Yeah, um, chess would be a very quiet game. Chess, checkers. Um, August is, he just turned four, and one of the new ones, He's he we started this before, but he really is good at it now. His His spatial memory is really strong, and so we play memory you oh, know yeah. so memory would be great beautiful cards yeah. from anthropology that Sophia was gifted from her auntie when she was a baby uh-huh and then I just get out 16 at a time because I like everything oh, yeah. to be in oh, grids totally. yeah. And, yeah you know it's doable but he remembers course, way better than I do oh I know kids are amazing right. so it was just kind of teaching him the strategy because he'd immediately go to the first card he remembered and then sometimes and then now forgot. you can't find them matching mm-hmm. right because you guys so, first card. Maisie still does that yeah. too and she's seven because so. instead he knows that the maid is out there yeah but instead of going somewhere random first you yeah, know, in hopes that you get anyway. Well, and my strategy is that. corners first because if you oh, at sure. least know the corners, right. then no. if you turn one, then you're like, oh, it's you can remember. Right. It's not somewhere is. random. Yeah. yeah, but he likes to do it in random shapes, and he still remembers. Yeah, so I like that those kind of games uh, build skills still yeah. that are um, not super hyper in their motivation. And um, it's just kind of a cute bonding, yeah, you know, learning, yeah. Uh, incognito yeah. learning, especially if you didn't have that time mm-hmm. during the day. Yeah. When we got home today, so we're in the evening now. So bedtime could mean also evening, right? Yeah. So um, my son was like, can we play some Remy Cube? And I said, well, I don't have a lot of time because you were coming over. Right. But yeah, let's do one round. And so we're just quietly doing it. And Great. it was just really nice, yeah. you know. My son I, asked my his, special time. Yeah, my son asked his grandpa to play Guess Who with him because we were oh, just yeah. gifted Guess yeah. Who. Yeah, we have Guess Who. Yeah, that was a fun one. Oh, and with your big kids, just a little hack on a Guess Who. My yeah. daughter and husband are now playing it with subjective questions instead oh. of like, so who do you have? Does your person look like they might read oh, a I lot of books? That. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That is not how I can play Dude, it. I know. I'm like, no, thank you. And that's I can't so guess far out there. I know. But you know, they had fun doing that's that. So, so it's just a fun variation. Yeah. And it gets different thinking. Now you're understanding objective, you know, and or subjective versus objective or whatever yeah. terms you're putting on I that. love it. Yeah. So it's just different kinds of learning and variations on games are really good for the brain. Yeah. Well, I, it just sparked my memory of Ruby when she was learning to read, especially, and she's still wants to do it today about harder words is she would spell a word for me and then I had to see if I knew what the word was because it was spelled phonetically Phonetically. yeah and so I sometimes she got her phonograms correctly and then sometimes she picked a different phonogram that makes the same sound sure so so then I would figure it out and then she would want me to do it back to her and and then now if ever I'm putting to bed and they ask for it she's like but it has to be really really hard words and I'm like I don't know those words (laughs) I'm not good with words they're not in my vocabulary yeah um and so yeah uh now let's talk about some takeaways yeah yeah okay one observe your child's natural rhythm yes just observe her when you put her to bed at night. Does she go to sleep right away? Well, if you still want that evening time with her, then maybe just, like you said, Back have a quiet hour. Yeah. Um, or if she stays up really late and you realize she's a night owl, then you capitalize. Yeah. Capitalize on that. Yeah. That's a great, that's a golden mm-hmm. opportunity. Um, and then keep track of how early she wakes up because mm-hmm. if she's also waking up super early, then, then maybe there's a, a different sleep issue going sure. on. Okay, and then follow your child's interest. I would buy my son all these engineering books, lift the flap, lift engineering books, and he wasn't really interested in them. And so what I have figured out now, he likes the book of why. He likes the Guinness Book of right. Records. He likes weird facts. Random. Even yeah. though he loves trains, he wasn't looking right. at all the he train books. He more trivia stuff than he does. He does. Like, yeah. yeah. And then jokes, like we'll hear him giggling out of nowhere, and it's because he's reading <laughs> these joke books, you know, and it's just it's so cute. So cute. So we have finally started figuring out at this point in time right. what he's interested in and so can do more of that. Um, and then... Number three. So number one is observe your child's natural rhythm. Number two, follow your child's interest. Number three, show your interest. Yeah. And so ask your child every so often when he wakes up, like, oh, what was interesting that you did last night? Like, tell mm-hmm. me one of the things you learned. That's like, cool. And, and then they'll mm-hmm. be like, oh, and then now you're bonding with them in the morning about something from the night before. Right. And you can also go over the convert, like if you had a deep conversation the night before, you can say, okay, how do you feel now about that conversation we had? Because they've had time to heal. Yeah. And, and now they're ready to, they're, 
to be challenged. And so you totally. can like kind of dive deeper. So, um, that. yeah, so that, that's it. That's the, that's, that's the homeschool hack using Love bedtime. It. Yeah. And, and Hey, if you can get them started at seven, think of the time you will have to yourself, you know, other than if you're the one playing the game or the conversation, right. but if it's independent work, right. Yeah, you just, yeah. Anyways, okay, so now it's time for the Coop Coop Q&A, where we answer your questions. If you have a question, you can email us, mamahens at thecoophomeschool.com. What's our question? question? Uh, (laughs) I I would homeschool, but I have only one child. Don't you think he'd be better at our church school? Mm. Yeah. Oh, I mean... I can't, it's a very difficult one to answer. It's yeah. not my kid. Yeah. This exactly. is my initial answer. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It's uh-huh. not my kid, but I'm an advocate for homeschooling. Yeah. So I would say, well, I still think you would do a better job than your church, church school. school. Yeah. You know your kid. You're, you know, you've got a different investment in it, but what do you think? Yeah. So I think the church school sounds pretty amazing because you can of course. have a really great community. Like we've talked about Absolutely. community versus a network. And if your school is connected to your church, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but if you want to homeschool, just hearing that I would homeschool, right? Then it's like, okay, well, if you want to homeschool, right? Then maybe you should. Maybe you should try it, right? And um, and yes, like homeschooling a single child can pose some challenges, right? Because but and you had a single child that you were for homeschooling a time, for yeah. a long time. Until Augie came along, but you can, and like we say, check out our podcast episode number 33, Mm -hmm. Homeschooling the Only Child, because we talk about how you can focus on, on your child's needs without distractions. Right. You can pick the, now knowing what we know, you can pick the right time of day for learning together in accordance with his circadian rhythm without needing to compromise with other kids in the house. Totally. Um, and you truly personalized education and yeah, it truly tailor and customize your child's education with not only with his rhythm, but with his curriculum or content field trips, his interests. Right. And no matter how amazing your church school is, it's still going to operate like a traditional school. And Mm -hmm. so it can't give your child a truly unique and personalized education, Mm -hmm. which if it's not a priority, you. That's mm-hmm. fine. And yes, your child your child is getting to be with other kids, which yeah. is a wonderful thing. But that's time without you. And yeah. and so you know, you only have a little bit of the time of their life to really um, invest into them. And so if you want to homeschool, then you shouldn't I we would say you shouldn't let having an only ch- a single child get in the way of that. Right. Thanks for listening. We love your support. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave a rating and review to let us know how we're doing, and share our podcast with your friends who need a little community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling.